This whole body MRI study reveals surprising patterns of muscle growth. How uniformly does your muscle really grow? Hey everyone, Holly here. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're exploring a study that asks a deceptively simple question. When you lift weights and build muscle, where exactly do you gain it? Now, we often focus on individual muscles, the quads, the biceps, the pecs, and plenty of research looks at regional muscle hypertrophy using either MRI scans or ultrasound imaging of the legs or the arms. But something we rarely see is a true whole body look at muscle hypertrophy, meaning how much total skeletal muscle mass you gain and how that growth is distributed across the entire body. Now, this is important because resistance training doesn't necessarily grow every muscle in the same way or to the same extent. And when we use regional measures, for example, looking at only the mid thigh, we're assuming that what happens in one area of that muscle represents the entire muscle or even the entire body. But is that actually true? This paper is set out to answer exactly that. It's a small pilot study, but the methods are incredibly thorough, including continuous slice by slice whole body MRI, which is one of the most interesting ways I have ever seen muscle mass assessed in humans. So today we're going to break down what they did, what they found, and what it means for interpreting muscle hypertrophy research more broadly. So let's take a look at some background. Most MRI based studies look only at the limbs, meaning in the thighs or upper arms, or sometimes major regions like the legs or trunk. But resistance training has the potential to grow muscle everywhere, including the deeper musculature of the trunk that is almost never measured. Now, I am only aware of one study that looked at the musculature associated with the trunk, and the authors concluded that a large amount of muscle mass lies in this region. Think about your lats and your abdominals, for example. Anyways, as the authors of the original paper we're reviewing pointed out that the distribution of muscle hypertrophy, meaning where it actually occurs, has hardly been studied. So even though we know resistance training increases fat-free mass and increases local muscle size, we don't know how evenly or unevenly that hypertrophy actually occurs throughout the body. Their goal was to measure both absolute increase in total skeletal muscle mass and the relative distribution of hypertrophy across all regions. And to do that, they needed whole body MRI without gaps between the slices which is actually very rare even today. So let's take a look at the methods. Three healthy young men, physically active, but with no prior resistance training experience, volunteered for this study. I know it's a small population size, but remember the purpose here was not to detect population level effects, but to capture high resolution anatomical data about hypertrophy patterns. Training took place three days per week for 16 weeks. Each session included a combination of both lower body and upper body exercises, including squats, knee extension, knee flexion, bench press, and lat pull downs. Each exercise was performed for a warm up set, followed by three sets to failure in the 8 to 12 rep range. The loads were progressively increased to maintain that rep range, so participants always trained at close to lentinal failure, which is typical for a true hypertrophy style program. Strength was assessed using a one rep max test for the knee extension, knee flexion, Flexion, bench press and lat pull down with a three rep max test for the squat. This gave researchers upper and lower body strength measures for comparison before and after the study. But the most impressive part of this methodology was the whole body MRI. Participants underwent a complete scan from the first cervical vertebrae all the way down to the ankles using a continuous slice by slice acquisition. Now, what was novel was there was no inter-slice gap and each slice was only one centimeter thick. This allowed the researchers to calculate muscle cross-sectional area for every single slice, which is honestly pretty incredible. Muscle volume was calculated by multiplying the area of each slice by its thickness, and then muscle mass was estimated using the known tissue density of skeletal muscle. They also assessed bone density with something called hydrostatic weighing to calculate body fat percentage and estimate estimate fat-free mass. This allowed them to compare changes in total skeletal muscle mass with the changes in fat-free mass, which surprisingly are not always the same. Now, before we dive into the results, if you're ready to train smarter, not harder, check out my evidence-based training programs. They're designed for all experience levels with unique muscle building focuses, built-in volume tracking and exercise demonstrations. And for just $12.99, you honestly can't go wrong. To download 
download your next training program, visit via-body.com or you can check out my fitness app, getviafit.com and start your evidence-based training program today. Now let's get back to the video. After 16 weeks of training, lower body strength increased by about 16% and upper body strength increased by about 30%. These are both fairly typical improvements for untrained individuals. Fat-free mass increased by 2.6 kilograms and body fat decreased slightly by about 0.6%. But when they looked specifically at skeletal muscle mass using whole body MRI, the increase was even more substantial. The mean gain of 4.2 kilograms of skeletal muscle mass across the three participants. This is important because the skeletal muscle gain exceeded the increase in fat-free mass, something we don't usually see reported. It suggests that other components of fat-free mass such as connective tissue, organ mass, glycogen, or total body water did not increase alongside muscle muscle and may have even decreased slightly. Now, this is particularly relevant for individuals who track changes in lean body mass, but don't have access to direct muscle measurement. Next, let's talk about distribution. The greatest absolute increases in muscle cross-sectional area were found across the shoulder and chest regions, the upper thigh and the upper arm. These are large trainable muscle groups that respond well to multi-joint movements like the squat and the bench press, exactly the exercises you used in this program. But the relative hypertrophy, meaning the percentage increase, gives us an even more interesting picture. Hypertrophy was not uniform across the body. The shoulder, chest, and upper arm experienced the largest relative increases, around 25 to 40%. Meanwhile, the waist, hips, forearms, and thighs, and the lower legs saw similar relative increases, roughly 10 to 20%. Across all three subjects, the shoulder region showed a 26% increase at the peak cross-sectional area. The mid-thigh increased by about 18% and the lower leg by about 9%. In short, this study clearly demonstrated that muscle growth does not occur evenly throughout the body, even during a full body training program with similar volume being performed on all muscle groups. One of the most interesting findings is that the increase in total skeletal muscle mass was larger than the overall increase in fat-free mass. This suggests that other non-muscle tissues within the fat-free compartment may have actually decreased. Prior studies have also shown that non-muscle lean tissues such as organ mass or water compartments can change independently of muscle tissue during resistance training. This highlights the limitations of using DEXA or hydrostatic weighing as proxies for muscle hypertrophy. Again, these are indirect measurements, not direct. The distribution pattern is also pretty fascinating. Upper body muscles showed larger relative increases, even though the training program included substantial lower body work. The authors suggest that hypertrophy varied not only between regions, but also within those regions, meaning muscle growth wasn't uniform even along the length of the same muscle group. This reinforces that using a single cross-sectional area like the mid-thigh site may not accurately represent the hypertrophy taking place across the entire entire muscle. All this to say, it is important to note that this study was not without limitation. The sample size was of course very small with only three individuals, but the purpose was methodological, to demonstrate what whole body slice by slice MRI can reveal about hypertrophy distribution. This data offers high anatomical resolution, but more research with larger samples will be needed to generalize the findings. The practical takeaway here is that muscle hypertrophy is highly region specific and full body resistance training doesn't produce uniform growth across all muscle groups. This means that when we use single site measurements in research, like a mid-thigh MRI, we may be missing the real story of how muscle grows across the entire body. It also reinforces that hypertrophy is driven by a combination of mechanical tension, exercise selection, and how each muscle is loaded during training. Even within a well-rounded program, some muscles simply grow more quickly than others. To wrap up this video, this study gives us a rare look at whole body muscle growth and how it actually distributes itself during resistance training. Over 16 weeks, participants gained around four kilograms of skeletal muscle mass, but that growth was far from uniform. 
the upper body saw the greatest relative increases while the lower body grew more modestly. And intriguingly, skeletal muscle mass increased more than fat-free mass, highlighting just how complex body composition changes can be during training. Now, before you go, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one because these findings really challenge how we typically think about muscle growth. Did anything here surprise you about the way hypertrophy was distributed across the muscle groups? Or do you tend to see areas grow faster than others in your own training? Drop your experiences and questions in the comments below and let's chat about it. Now, if you've enjoyed these deep dives into research, please make sure that you like the video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next study breakdown. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.